Please welcome your host, Dion Taylor. Hey guys, Dion Taylor here. Now, I'm sure you've all heard about Microsoft 365 Copilot at some point in time, but just in case that you're not familiar with this tool, let me explain what this is. Microsoft 365 Copilot is a digital personal assistant. It's a chatbot that integrates with your work content and work context into its chat capabilities. Now, users can ask Copilot them questions in natural language about Microsoft 365 related things. For example, summaries about chats or emails or, or files or asking for help with writing a proposal or a draft email or even getting help with generating ideas. Now, how great would it be to extend Copilot with data from external applications so that users will be able to ask questions about other things than just the data that lives inside of Microsoft 365, right? Sales users would be able to ask questions about sales data like opportunities and leads and field service workers would be able to get data from Dynamics 365 field service. In this episode, I will show you how to enable this feature in your tenant. Now, since this functionality is in public preview today, I needed to create a support ticket in a Microsoft 365 admin center to opt into this preview first. Once that was done, there were some things that I had to configure in the Microsoft 365 Admin Center. So let's go ahead and take a look at how we can configure that. Since I successfully opted in for this functionality, I am now going to deploy the Dynamics 365 Copilot Studio app. And I can do that by expanding the settings area that you see over here and then going to Integrated Apps. Then you can see here that I have available apps selected. And what I'm looking for is the Dynamics 365 and Copilot Studio app. This is the one that I'm looking for. So you're just going to go ahead and click on that. And as you can see here, the plugin for Microsoft Copilot is enabled. So that's all good. And then all I have to do here uh, from here, as you can see, currently this app is not deployed. So to deploy it, I'm just going to click here on deploy app. And as you can see, I can now, I'm now going through a screen that's going to ask me some certain things, right? What are my host products? I'm going to go ahead and is this a test deployment? No, I'm going to give this to the entire organization. I'm going to go ahead and next. And here you can see that all the permissions uh, it's managed from here to view the latest app status or manage how the app shows in Teams. You can go to the Teams Admin Center. I'm going to go ahead and click on Next here. And that is it. Now I can just go ahead and finish that deployment. And you can see how quickly that's been done. So I can either click on Done or I can view that deployment. And here you can also see that everything looks good. And then lastly, under deployed apps, you can see here, I've now deployed that Dynamics 365 and Copilot Studio app directly from within the Microsoft 365 Admin Center. Now, the next thing that I need to do is enable the connection between my chat instance and the plugin registry. Now, you only need to create that connection once and you can do this from the Copilot app in Microsoft Teams. So let's go ahead and open Microsoft Teams. And then obviously we want to go ahead and navigate to that Copilot app. So you can do that by clicking here on the more apps. And then I'm going to look for Copilot. And it's probably not going to be here because I already have it right over here, but that's how you can access it. And so the only thing that I'm going to do here is enter a question and I'm going to ask how can I use a plugin and if everything goes well then Copilot should give me there you go should give me some information about pl plugins here and then all I have to do is just to visit this link as you can see here so I can just go ahead and click on that and as you can see that now takes me to that power platform
Copilot plugins page. Now there's really nothing I have to do here just by opening this. Apparently I created uh, that connection, but I can actually also here go to flows because I saw this the other day. This is kind of interesting where you're going to be able to uh, actually enable two of these flows here. Apparently I haven't tried it, but I wanted to, uh, to show you that we can do that. Okay, so let's go back to Microsoft Teams. And the other thing I wanted to show you, obviously first before we start to chat, is where those plugins are, right? So I can click here on plugins and you can see currently I can actually enable this web content plugin. So then it could actually go crawl the web asking for answers or looking for answers as well. And then here is my Copilot Studio plugin as well. Currently my Dynamics 365 plugin that is going to allow me to ask questions uh, that are related to my Dynamics 365 sales instance is not populating right now, but I do have Copilot Studio here with my Dynamics 365 field service plugin. Now, as you can see, uh, I have multiple field service plugins, right? And the issue currently is if you have a multiple environments where you have installed Dynamics 365 field service, this is what it's going to look like as a plugin, right? Because it's not showing us in which environment this Dynamics 365 field service app is living in. So that's not really the best scenario right now, but Microsoft is aware. So they're looking to actually append the name of the app with the environment name as well. So it's going to be easier to, uh, to figure out which of those, uh, plugins we need to use. And now that I have enabled the field service plugin, I can now go ahead and start asking questions about that data. Okay, so let's start with trying to get the full details of my most recent work order. And as you can see, it's now looking for my most recent work order by accessing that plugin, right? So let's just give it a couple of minutes here. And here you go. You can kind of see here when the date was, what the name is of the primary incident type, the work order type. It's even giving me the GUID of the work order as well. And if I click here on reference, you can see here where this is coming from, right? From Dynamics 365 field service. Now let's see, you can see here that it's actually giving me some other prompts here as well, right? Um, let's see here, what are the different work order types? Let's just go ahead and try that and see what it does. And as that is going, you see that you have a little prompts view here as well. I'm not knowing if that actually, yeah, that doesn't have anything to do with field service, right? No, that's just Copilot in general. I figured, let me just go ahead and take a look at that. So here you can kind of see here the different work order types. Um, let's just go ahead and say what is involved in an installation work order just kind of see what it's giving me. So it's kind of nice. I feel that it's, it's giving you those prompts, right? So you know what you can ask. This is very interesting. So it's basically giving me all that information now related to that installation work order. Okay, now let's see if we can do something else. What about showing me work orders in a table format? Let's see if it could do that as well. And you can do the same thing if you're using the plugin for Dynamics 365 sales and you can do the same thing there, right? You can say, hey, show me opportunities in a table format or show me leads in, an, in a format like that. Oh, I'm not sure. This is a lot. Yeah, this is a big table here. It's not even going to fit on here, but it just keeps going here. It's kind of weird that it's just going like that, um, even though it doesn't fit on the page. So that's kind of funny. Okay. So let's see if we can ask to, let's just say stop generating here. And I'm going to say, what is the status of a particular work order? So now I'm just asking for a particular work order. Oh, it doesn't like that. Let's try that again. Maybe it's because I actually 
stopped generating that response. Just give it a second here. And again, utilizing that plugin to get that information directly here. And there we go. This is a really cool guys. There you go. And again, right, that reference so I can see where this is coming from. I would really like to also get like the URL of the record that we're talking about because I did notice that that was actually available uh, when we're looking at Dynamics 365 sales. But unfortunately, I don't see that here. Okay, let's try this one. Show me unscheduled work orders in a table format. I'm hoping it's not going to use all those columns that don't fit on the screen again, but let's just take a look and see what we get here when we try this again. And here we go. Yeah, so this is not as many columns that, that we saw before, right? So this looks definitely a lot better. I can see created on dates. And what I tried when I was looking at the opportunities, I even said like, hey, add this particular column, right? And it actually did that as well. So other things that you can try is to just say, hey, create a table or show me unscheduled work orders in a table format and then use these columns in there. You can do things like that, um, obviously, as well. I hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, don't forget to hit that like button. Also, don't forget to subscribe so you'll never miss another video again. Thanks for watching. Until next time.